All right, guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are in Viki, which is in the northeastern part of Helsinki, and we're going to do another out and about video for you. So, the brewery that we're going to have a look at today is probably one of the best known Finnish craft breweries outside of Finland. They're doing some very, very nice beers, in my experience, some really good New England IPAs, big sweet stouts, and also Nordic sours. So, when I was coming to Helsinki, this is one of the breweries that I really wanted to check out. So we're going to have a little look at this place today which is Coolhead Brewery. These guys were originally based in Tusula and now they have moved themselves here to Helsinki. This is a former botanic garden um, or tropical garden however you want to call it. It's a pretty impressive facility so I'm really looking forward to this one. We'll do as we always do. We'll go in, we'll have a little look around, we'll try some of the beers. We're going to try the food as well because I'm pretty hungry so I hope that you guys enjoy this one. But very cool to be here in Helsinki and having a look at uh, Coolhead Brew. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. All right, so yeah guys, as I mentioned to you, this is originally an old botanical garden and uh, apparently it sat dormant for basically you know, 10 years, 15 years, something like this, before Coolhead actually bought it over. But it's pretty much in the middle of uh, Kind of residential area. We're out to the kind of northeast of the central part of Helsinki, but um, yeah, it's a pretty impressive facility actually, and there is quite a queue for uh, for the beers. So yeah, as you can see here, Pien Panimo, so microbrewery. When you come in there, you can see the nice cool head brew symbol. Um, and of course up here, the, the main guy behind this brewery is Brazilian, so you've got the sign to his hometown of Rio de Janeiro and the tap room and so on. But um, yeah, when you come in, you can see this place is pretty cool. We'll have a closer look at the tap list a little bit later, hopefully it will calm down a wee bit, but you know, this place is pretty cool. There's a line for the beers already, so we'll have a little walk around here. So as you can see the brewery is pretty much straight ahead when you come in. They've got some merchandise and some beers over there that we'll look at more closely a little bit later on. You can see the brewery through here and uh, yeah they've also got a few different areas that you can sit. So you can come in here. My dad and Riku are chilling over there and uh, yeah out the back, they have this area, which is quite nice. They've got a big stage over there, and uh, yeah, this nice kind of beer garden area, which is pretty cool. So yeah, pretty impressive facility, I have to say. This is one of the most unique craft breweries that I've come across while I've been making these videos. Um, so yeah, this is the Coolhead Brewery in Viki, in the northeastern part of Helsinki. It is pretty cool. So yeah, they host music, uh, music concerts and all these kind of things. But yeah, we are going to try some of the beers. So let's get started on that. All right, guys. Well, time for our first tasting then here at Coolhead in Viki in the northeast of Helsinki. So I decided to come out to film this one because they're just playing some sort of 80s music inside and I don't know why they feel the need to play the music inside these places, you know, go to Germany, go to Czech, go to Belgium, they don't have to play this kind of hipster music, it's just a bit shit to be honest with you, it just annoys me. But that's just me. Uh, we're in Finland as well, you know, if you're going to play music, play some heavy metal. You know, it's the land of heavy metal, but that's just me. Anyway, so the first beer that we're going to have a little look at is on the light side of things. And I think that's where you should always start when it comes to uh, visiting a brewery. So the one we're looking at for this review, for our first tasting, is Vamos, which is a Mexican lager. comes in at 4.4% ABV, and this should be quite nice. Uh, I have to say, I do like the cool head glasses act. So this is a 0.15. I just wanted a small volume for this one and this will be ideal. So yeah, anyway, as you would expect from a Mexican lager, it's poured a lovely kind of bright yellow golden straw type color. When it came out the tap, it had about a quarter of 
yeah, quarter to a one third finger of a frothy, I would have said perfect white head. You can see that color wise, it's a nice pale golden straw as we've mentioned. There's a little bit of natural haze to this one, but it's uh, pretty much as you would expect. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the uh, bottom of the head there, but overall it looks pretty nice and if you think about a Mexican lager, this is exactly what you would expect. So uh, yeah, let's have a wee look at the aroma and just see what we have here. Yeah, it smells quite nice. I mean, straight away with this one, you can smell the um, you can smell that little bit of sort of corn sweetness that you would expect from a Mexican lager. Underneath that, there's a little bit of that kind of fresh bread bread crust. Um, yeah, a little bit of fresh bread bread crust, a little bit of white bread, some nice kind of corny sweetness in there, a little bit of McVitie's digestive biscuit, this sort of thing. These are all things that you would expect when you're. Uh, yeah, these are all things that you would expect of a Mexican lager, of course. On the hoppy side of things, you've got a little touch of uh, earthiness in there, you've got a nice little bit of floral aromaticity, and you've also got that little bit of grassiness too, but when it comes to the hoppy side of this beer, I would say that it's, um, yeah, I would say that it's kind of, it, it, it's actually a little bit more floral. The more that you smell of this beer, the more that you get a kind of floral character out of it. I really like it. Um, yeah, it does get a little bit more hoppy the more that you smell of it for sure and a bit more of the malt comes out. On the fruity side of things it's kind of typical, you've got a little bit of a kind of oily pear, a little bit of sultana. Other than that I don't really know what to say about it to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, everything that you would want from a Mexican lager. So I think it's about time that we taste this one. So yeah, this is the Vamos. 4.4% uh, Mexican lager from Coolhead Brew here in Viki in the northeastern part of Helsinki in Finland. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skal, Kipis. <laughs> Let me say straight away, that is very, very nice. Very easy to drink. A little bit more bready than some of the other Mexican lagers I've had recently, and I, only, I can only say that because I had one at Dig Brew in uh, Birmingham in England recently, and that was very well done. But this one is a little bit more bready than that. Um, probably made with slightly better ingredients, I should say. But um, yeah, this is really nice actually, I like this for sure. So yeah, try this. Let's break it down for you and describe it a wee bit more in depth. Yeah, so multi backbone of the beer. There's a little bit of a bread crust in there. Yeah, a little bit of a bread crust in this one, forming the backbone. Some white bread in there. Definitely a little bit of pale malt. Uh, on top of that, you're starting to get a little bit of the more kind of oily, corny sort of flavour. A little bit of McVitie's digestive in the middle of the the palate too. Um, these are all things that you would expect of the Mexican lager. There's maybe a wee touch of straight up caramel or honey in the very centre of your palate but uh, yeah so straight up honey caramel as you move further a little bit more of a kind of corny sweetness and a wee bit more of McVitie's digestive biscuit white bread underneath a little bit of bread crust um, but yeah it's quite nice and it is pretty much what you would expect of a Mexican lager so um, yeah I like how this um, how this goes together on that multi side of things for sure so it gets a thumbs up from uh, from me on that side of things uh, yeah on the hoppy side of the beer yeah hoppy side of the beer um, as you would expect from a Mexican lager it's not the most hop forward uh, beer that you're going to come across but it still works out pretty nicely um, in the back corners of the palate there's a little touch of earthiness as you come further forward it's a little bit herbal and as you push toward the front kind of corners of the palate it's a little bit more um, a little bit more floral but there's not a lot of floral and hoppy character to this one I have to say around the front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and grassy the grassy side of the beer is a you know the green component overall is quite wet I would say so um, yeah the way that it goes together on the hoppy side of things is again what you would expect front third of the palate Yeah, front third of the palate 
it's kind of what we picked out in the aroma. You've got a little bit of that kind of sultana, you know, dry white green grapey sort of thing. There's a little bit of an oily pear, maybe a little touch of apricot, things like this. These are all things that you would expect from um, from the Mexican lager. Um, but the fruity side of things leans toward that more oily end of the spectrum, which again is what you'd expect. Um, so for me overall, I would say that flavor-wise, this beer is nicely done. When it comes to a Mexican lager, you don't have such a big scope of kind of crazy things to do, uh, so you just want it to fit the style and for it to be nice and refreshing. And this beer fits that profile for sure. Um, on the mouthfeel to round off then, uh, for me, top end of light bodied, carbonation, uh... yeah, carbonation, I would say that this one is quite, um... it has a little bit of crispness to the carbonation, the mouthfeel overall is a mix of clean and oily, uh, IBU wise, I think it's a standard 15, 20 IBUs, you're not going to get much bitterness out of a Mexican lager. Malty side of things, quite smooth and quite sweet, then you've also got that little bit of oily fruity character coming out of it. But overall, it is quite a nice, um, yeah, it is quite a nice Mexican lager this, and I've enjoyed it. And this is the very first time I've tried a lager from Coolhead Brew as well, of course. So um, yeah, I think that's a good place to leave it at for this review. So this was the Vamos, a 4.4% Mexican lager beer, our first beer here at the Cool Head Brew Tap Room and Brewery in Viki Hin Helsinki. Let's see what else we can do over the next little while, but you'll see a few other little snippets before that. Catch you guys in just a second. Cheers. All right, guys, so it's a little bit quiet. We'll have a little look at the Cool Head tap list. So uh, yeah, first off, they have the Vamos Mexican lager. The Bock Clocker, which is a West Coast Bock, that sounds quite interesting. Wands of Wisdom, a, a White Wheat Wit. Then they've got a few different Nordic Sours, the Naked Sauna Sour, the Lemon Licorice, the Salted li uh, Licorice Raspberry, the Mojito Lemonade, and then the Goza Fresca Kiwi and Sabro. Um, yeah, Coolhead are pretty good when it comes to those um, more, th those kind of hot sours. I always think they're pretty good. But then, uh, yeah, they've got a few more over here. The Passion of the Deets, or Passion of the Beets, sorry, a Nordic Sour. They have the Lollipops one, a triple fruited one. I think that's one we're going to look at later. They have the Wet Cooler, Vermont Pale Ale, Citra, 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 New England Pale Ale, Heartstone IPA, Behind the Haze, Hazy IPA, and also the Chocolate Galore. So, uh, yeah, some really nice beers on tap here at Coalhead Brew tonight. We're going to have a look at these for you. So let's do this. All right, guys. Well, I've come back out to my spot outside because it's nice and quiet out here, and I guess you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. And uh, the music has gotten a little bit better, I will hasten to add. But uh, yeah, for this second beer tasting, then we are going to go to a style that I know Coolhead can do very well. This is one that I've tried from them before. So yeah, this is a beer that I've heard of, but I've never managed to try but I know that this one is quite highly rated. So this particular beer is called um, Behind the Haze. It comes in at 7% ABV, and as you might be able to tell from the appearance and the name, it is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So yeah, when this beer poured, it poured with about a half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream colored head. Uh, there are one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there, but a few moving up toward the surface as well and as you can see the head has uh, faded away to be a very thin foamy layer but it looks nice if I put my fingers behind the glass you can see this one is pretty opaque for a seven percenter it's uh, kind of what you would expect in terms of opacity but it looks very very nice so the color of this one would as, as I said it's kind of mango juice colour I would say, like a nice kind of bright yellow. Remember the colour of these beers depends on the type of malts that you use, the length of your wort boil, any adjuncts you put in or any barrel aging you do, but of course those latter two variables you don't need to care too much about when it comes to New England IPAs. But other than that I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the appearance of this one. Let's take a closer look at the aroma and see what we have in this beer. So let's do this. Yeah, very, very nice smell in beer, this one. Straight away, you get that big 
yeah, you get that big juicy fruity kind of thing out of it. Uh, as I've said to you before, for me there are six different things to consider when it comes to a New England IPA. The sort of uh, yeasty farmhousey character, the rye leaning sort of thing, the more kind of rye leaning graininess. Those two variables are of course a bit more prominent when it comes to American brewed New England IPAs. But you've got wheaty bitiness, barley malt bread, oaty creaminess and also sweetness. But when it comes to this one, this one strikes me as being quite oaty, a little bit wheaty, and also kind of barley maltish as well. So, um, yeah, the way that this goes together on the malty side of things is quite nice. I get quite a bit of wheat in the back of the nose. Yeah, there's a good little bit of... Um, yeah, there's a good little bit of uh, oaty creaminess in there as well. And yeah, the oats for me, it actually, you know... You do get quite a bit of yeasty character out of this one, so a big kind of doughy yeasty note as well, whitey, uh, wheaty bitiness as I've said, some white bread, a little bit of bread crust and that kind of oatiness. But what I would say about this beer is that it's not overly, it really is not overly kind of sweet or anything like that. The, the, the kind of malty component of this beer does not have a huge amount of sweetness to it, which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, quite oaty but at the same time quite wheaty and bitey. I really like how this goes together. The yeah the, the malty side of things is quite nicely done in this. When it comes to the green component in the beer um, there's a little touch of earthiness but again that takes a bit of a that takes a little bit of a back seat. The green component is for the most part quite floral. I would say that this is quite a big bright floral New England IPA. Uh, yeah, at the front of the nose, I would say this one's quite grassy. It's got quite a bit of zesty, grassy character. So yeah, the green component really leans toward that kind of floral and grassy um, sort of thing, which I have to say I really quite enjoy. Um, so yeah, good little bit of floral character, nice grassiness in there. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the green component. Now, the fruity side of things, it has quite a little bit of a strong passion fruit. Some big uh, kind of juicy mango notes in there as well. Um, yeah, interesting, really interesting for sure. So, yeah, for me, this one, yeah, big strong passion fruit, juicy mango. So there is a little bit of that kind of drier apricot-y, pineapple-y sort of thing in there. I don't find that this one is too pungent in terms, it doesn't have too much in the way of orange or lime or anything like that. It's quite a tropical leaning New England IP, I have to say. So yeah, this smells pretty nice. Let's get stuck into this though and see what we have. So this one is Behind the Haze, 7% New England Hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Another one of Coolhead's beers on tap here. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Ooh, that is pretty nice, I have to say. Uh, I'm going to say straight away, when I first taste this one, it seems like uh, a mix of like a big wheaty and bitey, but also quite an oaty and creamy New England IPA. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, this one has got a little bit of zip to it, which is, is quite interesting. Um... Yeah, for me, yeah, for me, the malt base on this is quite thick. The level of thickness you get out of this beer for a seven percenter is pretty impressive, I have to say. Um, yeah, but I like it. This is very good. Um, if memory serves me correctly, the other New England IPA that I had from these guys was called Hulk Juice, and that was a collaboration between Gamma from Copenhagen in Denmark and Sudden Death, who are from near Lubeck in uh, in Germany, and that was. You know, big massive thing so this is only the second IPA that I've had from the um, cool head but yeah quite thick and quite wheaty so yeah middle of your palate then you get that fresh white bread bread crust a lot of white bread from the pale malt you can feel the wheat thickening that out and in that middle third of the palate you definitely get that kind of oaty note out of this one but it's not such a creamy oat it actually has a little bit of dryness to it the more that I drink of this the more that I think it's a really wheaty leaning IPA um, but as you go into the back third of the palate, you've got that nice thick wheaty character, good little bit of um, kind of wheaty bitiness in there with this one. Um, so yeah, 
the further you go into the aftertaste, you get more and more of that wheaty character coming out of it. But I like how it um, how it goes together. This is um, this is really quite interesting for sure. Let's look at the hoppy side of things. So yeah, green component for me. Little touch of earthiness there. Not overly much, but as you come further forward, it really gets quite... It does have a good little bit of dankness to it, this one, actually. A little bit of... Um, you see, a little... little yeah, you get more and more kind of dank floral aromaticity, and it gets a little bit spicy as you reach the front corners of the palate, and as you go round the front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and grassy and things, as you see, but still has a little bit of zestiness, for sure. Let's look at the fruity side of the beer. So yeah, fruity side of the beer for me, it's kind of what I described in the aroma. Toward the back of that front third of your palate, there's a little bit of passion fruit. As you come further forward, it gets a little bit more kind of mango and juicy-like. Then you start to get some of these lighter apricot-y notes, pineapple notes. But into the front third of the palate, this makes me think there's a bit of citra in here because you do get a little bit of that lemony, limey character. So I think there is a wee bit of citra in this one for sure. Yeah, a little bit of lemony, limey character in there. Um, could be Motueka, of course, as well, or even Equinot. But, uh, yeah, definitely, as I say, stronger passion fruit, juicy mango, a little bit of apricot, pineapple. These are kind of typical notes. Um, but then, yeah, as you go into the front part of that, front third of your palate, a little bit more of a lemony, limey character. So, um, yeah, I like it. On the... Um, on the mouthfeel side of things then, for me, in terms of it being a 7% New England, it's actually kind of thick. I would say that this is pushing toward the top end of mid-body. The carbonation is quite smooth. Um, for me, this beer has a little bit of dryness to it as well. The wheat has given the beer a bit of dryness. Uh, IBU-wise, mm, I think it's kind of 30, 35 IBUs feels a little bit more bitter than some of the other New Englands that I've had. Maltby's, as I said, is quite smooth, not much in the way of sweetness. It's a bit more of an old school New England, uh, if we can say that. Then you've got that nice kind of tropical fruit aroma to it, uh, tropical fruit flavour, and the fruits, I would say, are quite juicy. But um, yeah, the way this goes together is quite nice, and I think that's everything we really need to say about this. So this is the Behind the Haze 7% New England IPA, our second beer here at Coolhead Brew in uh, Viki in the northeastern part of Helsinki in Finland. Let's go on and see what else we can fit into this video. Catch you guys in just a second. Keepies and Ketos. Alright guys, so yeah, one of the things that Coolhead is well known for is their sourdough pizza. So yeah, a few different things here. They've got a margarita, the vodka rita. Sounds a little bit Russian, not sure that's my thing. Uh, a little bit of Hawaii. Not a great fan of pineapple on pizza, you guys can fight about that in the comment section below. Ferris, which without the jalapenos, sounds like it would be very nice. The hell mushrooms, the vegan, and also the parsa. So yeah, you can see it's about you know 16 euros or so for a pizza. That's about 16 dollars, maybe about 14 pounds sterling, something like this, 160 Swedish krona. Uh, for a restaurant pizza, it's a little bit more expensive than Sweden. Again, remember, Finland is quite pricey, most expensive country that uses the euro, as we've said before. They've got some sourdough pizzas for kids in there. They've also got some pizza dogs as well. Um, these actually sound quite nice as well. But that's a little quick look at the uh, Cool Head menu for you. There you are. So you'll see some pizza a bit later on in the video. Alright guys, so the pizza's just arrived and this is the ferries, but obviously I took off the kind of habaneros because I just think they're shit and I don't like them. So yeah, this one, lots of nice meat. I think it should be quite good. So let's have a little look at this and see what we think. I'm going to sit and cut this up because yeah, finger food. Alright guys, so let's have a little look at this pizza quickly. I need to, I've cut it up into eight pieces so I need to choose what slice we're going for. Um, this one has a wee bit of both on it. Wait a second. Here we are. So you can see you've got a nice little bit of the spicy sausage and also the meatball. So it looks good. Um, yeah, sourdough pizza, pretty much as you would expect. Let's go for it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's nice. I mean, dome, well cooked, sweet tomato sauce. The salt, it does have that little bit of kind of spice to it, so I think that's probably a thing to try and get you to drink more Mexican lager, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, yeah, let's have a wee look at the meatball. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, meatball is good, the sausage on this is good, it has that little bit of spice, which is obviously to try and get you to drink more beer. Um, really solid pizza, actually. As we said earlier, you know, prices in Finland it is a little bit pricey for what it is compared to other places, but it's good. Um, and it's not out of line with other prices that, for food that you'll see in Finland. For some reason, the beer doesn't seem to be too bad here, price-wise, but the food is, is a little bit pricey, I think. Um, but yeah, pizza here, the cool head is good, so it's worth checking out if you find yourself here. Let's leave it at that for this, because I'm hungry and I need to dig into the rest of this. Catch you guys with another beer review in just a second. Cheers. Alright guys, well, time for tasting number three then here at Cool Head in uh, Viki in the northeast of Park Helsinki. So yeah, we are going to try my first beer from a series that I have never tried anything from before from Cool Head. So this series is called Lollipops, which is a series of kind of candy, fruity type sour beers. The one that we're looking at is the second release in that series and it is supposed to be very, very nice. So uh, yeah, this one is called Lollipops, Pink Guava, Passion Fruit and Apricot. It comes in at 8% ABV and I guess we have to call this one an Imperial Nordic Sour or an Imperial Fruit Sour or something like that. So uh, yeah, that does give you a rough idea of what this beer is going to be. But anyway, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely kind of mixed tropical fruit juice colour. I guess we could say it's a kind of rich, dark, orangey sort of thing. When it poured, it had not a lot of head to it, just a kind of thin layer of a foamy, creamy sort of thing, but there's just a little ring around the edge of the glass now. But as I've told you in previous tastings, even in this video, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use, this goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role, but also any adjuncts that you put in and any barley that you do will affect it as well. Obviously, in the case of sour beers, uh, the, uh, the, the, the adjuncts that you put in, the different kinds of fruits, are going to affect the colour of the beer, and that is most certainly the case when it comes to this beer. So, uh, yeah, not much in the way of visible carbonation with this one. You can see it is pretty damn opaque. But like I said to you, when it comes to these sort of Nordic smoothie fruit sours, whatever we're going to call them these days, um, Cool Head do some of the best around. And they are one of the first Finnish breweries that you're going to hear about over the next little while. So uh, yeah, nothing else we need to say about the appearance of this beer. I think it's about time that we have a little look at the aroma of this one. Yeah, I'm going to say straight away with this beer, it's... Um, as with, you know, as I've said with these big fruity sours, they're very simple in terms of their composition and their aromas and flavours, but if they're done well, they're just absolutely beautiful. And I get the feeling this beer is going to be no exception to that rule. So, um, yeah, I'm knocking this with the bottom of my hand because it's this teku glass sort of thing. Always happens. But yeah, with this one straight away, it's very much like that kind of big yogurty sort of backbone to it. You get that petit filou yogurty note, some sweet oats, a little bit of vanilla. There is a little touch of that kind of Werther's original butter candy sort of thing. But then, yeah, on top of that, you get the, um, you, you get everything else that you expect to this one. I'm getting a sort of placebo grassy type note out of it. Of course, these beers are unlikely to have hops in them. They maybe have a little bit, but not a lot. Um, so yeah, definitely a little bit of a placebo kind of grassy effect out of this one. Not much in the way of floral note or earthiness or anything like that. But um, yeah, on the um, yeah. Other than that, I don't think there's anything we need to say about greenness or hoppiness in this beer. But yeah, it works. On the fruity side of things, it's kind of what you'd expect. You can smell the big brightness of the, the kind of pink passion fruit or pink guava I should say, sorry, not pink passion fruit. The pink guava on this one comes out nice. You get that greenness that separates mango from guava, but it's even brighter because it's pink guava. 
but then underneath you do get that slightly softer passion fruit and yeah you can get the apricot in there as well so it's a very tropical leaning sour this one but it certainly delivers on everything you would want from the uh, from the style I have to say um, yeah I don't think there's anything else we can really say about the aroma of this one. As I've said to you before, these kind of big sour beers are quite um, quite straightforward in terms of flavour and aroma profile, but if they're done well, they are very, very nice. I think it's about time that we get stuck into this one then. So this is Lollipops, Pink Guava, Passion Fruit and Apricot, the second in the Lollipop series, an 8% Imperial Nordic, Imperial Fruit, whatever you want to call it, sour beer. Uh, a style that Coolhead are of course known as specialists in. So let's get stuck into this one. Slanju, Skull, cheers, keep us. I'm going to say straight away, that's a very, very nice beer. It's actually quite puckering, like I find this really puckering when you take it in, but it is very very nicely done it gets a big thumbs up from me for sure yeah um, lovely lovely beer this is quite different to the other cool heads that I've had in the past this one's a lot sharper it's a lot more tar almost but at the same time it still has that fullness of flavor it's not quite as sweet that's what I've had from Coolhead in, uh, uh, in in previous previous times, I guess we could say. But it's a lovely, lovely beer. Yeah, this is very, very good. Um, yeah. So where to start with this one? Middle of the palate, you have a little bit of that kind of fresh bread crusty note there, some white bread, oaty creaminess on top of that. It really does give you a little bit of that yogurty note out of it, some of the kind of vanilla notes. The vanilla comes out a little bit further into the aftertaste, but I will say, this is not the thickest and creamiest of sour beers that I've come across before. It's actually a little bit lighter than that, although it's definitely not like a sort of smoothie sour but um, it still gives you a lot of flavour, I have to say. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the malt base in this one. But the thing that's really getting me about this beer is how much it maintains its like sour tartness and things. Um, it really holds that quite well, because one of the things you often notice about sour beers is that they you know, once you've gotten over that initial sip or two, they start to mellow out. This one really retains that big, sharp tartness. Uh, and that's, that's, that is pretty interesting and pretty unusual. So as I say, malt base, little bit of bread crust, soft, wet white bread, good bit of oaty creaminess, little bit of porridge kind of thing, petit filou type yogurt and a little bit of vanilla. Uh, when it comes to the hoppy side of this beer, just going by the way it comes out, I don't think there's hops in this one, but you do get a little bit of that placebo grassy note around the kind of front edge of your tongue, and then the rest of it is all about the fruit and the sharpness. So let's focus on that. Yeah. So when you take this one in, the pink guava really is the thing that's leading this one. You get that big sharp tartness from that, but then you get that big green note from the fact that it's guava, the further into the aftertaste you go, you'll notice that further forward on the uh, front third of your palate, you start to get the apricot and the passion fruit coming out of this one, so you can feel those softer tropical notes coming out, but yeah, it really is the pink guava that leads with all the sourness there, and that tartness lasts a long time into the aftertaste actually, so that is... Uh, really quite interesting with this one. Yeah, that really lingers. I have to say, out of all the cool head sours that I've had, this is certainly the sharpest and the tartest. Um, so yeah, this one really is kind of going to stick in the memory. I like it, but this is one 
say if you want a kind of sweeter, smoothie type sour, this maybe isn't the cool head for you. This one is um, really, it really is a little bit different from the others for sure. But I like it, I really like this. Um, yeah, let's round off this review then with the mouthfeel. So for me, it's kind of top end and mid body, the carbonation is very smooth. It does have a wee bit of creaminess to it, but like I say, it's not the thickest and sweetest of sours that you're going to come across from full head. But um, yeah, it's certainly one of the more tart ones. It really does have a big tart impact because of that pink lava. Um, it mellows out to be a little bit lighter and tropical, of course. Um, the malt base is quite smooth. It does have a little touch of sweetness to it. And in terms of IBUs, I think this is pretty much you know, like a, a, a zero to five IBU type beer. Really interesting one, but as I say, quite different to the other Cool Head beers. I've had in the, the past. So let's leave it at that for this one. This is the Lollipops second beer in the series, Pink Guava, Passion Fruit and Apricot. And very nice beer but definitely one of the more sour uh, and tart beers I've had from Cool Head. Let's leave it there. Catch you guys in a second. We're going to move on to the dark end of the spectrum for our fourth and final tasting. See you soon. Guys, just a little perspective from the seat that I filmed. Beer, uh, beer tasting number three from. This is very, very nice. Uh, there you can see the bar right in front of me. That's where you can collect your pizza. And Riku is just sitting enjoying his beer. There he is. Um, so yeah, really nice tap room here at, uh, at Cool Head. So let's leave it at that for this. Catch you guys in a second with another beer review. All right, guys, let's have a little look at what they have in the can shop here. Because remember in Finland, you can actually buy cans to take away. So they have the La Dolce Vita, which is an Italian pills, the Vamos, which is a Mexican lager, um, the Wet Puller, which is a Vermont Paleo, Words of Wisdom, uh, White Wheat Wit Beer, Citra Citra Citra, a New England Paleo, the Heart IPA, or Heart Stone IPA, which is a regular IPA, Smoked Sauna Sour, the Wanderlust Fantasy, the Naked Sauna Sour, which is a, listed as a Nordic Sour. Zen Out of Ten, Nordic Sour. Uh, the Goza Fresca, Kiwi and Sabro. The Mango Chili Goza. The Blizzard Smoosh, which is a double fruited candy sour. The double fruity, uh, the Party Smoosh, sorry, which is a double fruity candy sour as well. They've got a few guest beers here as well. A Nordic Summer Ale from Kimito. Uh, Drive on Tainen, the Hind from uh, Brekariet, they have the 45 Days of Christmas from Toil, the um, Sauna Paleo, Kiwi Mies, Lager as well, and the California Paleo from Fat Lizard, they have the Kusi, which is seltzer water, from, that's one of their own things, they have the Lollipops, Pink Guava and Passion Fruit, Triple Fruited, Nordic Sour once again, they have the Chocolate Galore, Chocolate Stout, the Salted Raspberry Licorice Nordic Sour, the Lemon Licorice Sour, this is one of the videos that I lost unfortunately. They have the Timmy Rosemarini Sour, which I'm guessing is yeah, Rosemary Sour, Nordic Sour, something like this. They have the Tiger Dreams, a Double Fruity Candy Sour, the Passion Fruit of Beets, and also the Cucumber Sour. So yeah, that is your look at the, uh, the fridge here, which is uh, pretty full I have to say, so I like it. Pretty awesome. There you go. That is your beer shop here in uh, early July 2022 at Coolhead Brew. All right, guys. Well, a little quick look at the merch. They don't actually have that much. You can get some kind of funky socks here. You can also get one of these little bags, and you can also get the different kind of Coolhead uh, T-shirts as well. All available from extra small to extra large for 20 euros. So a little bit of merchandise for you in all these different colors. It's pretty nice. All right, guys, so just a little quick view of some of the brew kit and things here. There you can see their kind of canning line. It's pretty cool. You can see all the cans kind of stacked up there ready to go. They've got some lagering tanks here. And there you can see some of the other fermenters and things over there. Some of the malt lying about too. But yeah, we can't go too far down here, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, this is the view you'll get if you have too many beers 
and need a little bit of a pee pee. So uh, yeah, there you go. A little quick look at some of the brewing equipment here at Coolhead, but it's a pretty awesome facility, I have to say. Really cool. All right, guys. Well, time for our fourth and final beer tasting then here at Coolhead in Viki in the northeast of Helsinki. So yeah, we're sat out the front this time, so it should be quite nice. And uh, yeah, for this one, we are going to go to the dark side of things. So Riku, do you want to introduce this beer? Okay, this one is a chocolate color, Imperial Stout with 9% ABV, and it's load, loaded with different kinds of chocolate. There's chocolate buttons, chocolate malts, cocoa nibs, and chocolate powder, I think. Mm. So it should be an absolute chocolate monster. Yeah. Uh, I think I've had... You've sent me a stout from these guys yeah, before. Yeah, it was the Black Velvet with uh, vanilla, vanilla. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, that was like a big 12 or 13% yeah. thing. So this one's a bit lighter than that. At 9%, yeah, this one, it's not the biggest of Imperial Stouts, but yeah. it should be quite interesting anyway. So appearance-wise, as you can see, uh, when this one poured, it had just a little bit of a kind of fawn coloured layer on top, a little bit of a foamy ring just around the edge. Um, it looks quite nice, so you can see the head has just kind of faded away to be a sort of thin foamy layer of course, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice. So yeah, colour wise it looks very much like a kind of uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi Max type thing. It's not the haziest and most opaque of beers, but yeah, when you shine the light through it you do get a little bit of that kind of mahogany, chestnutty sort of edge to it. Not too much in the way of visible carbonation. So uh, yeah, I think that covers the, the yeah. appearance, yeah. Uh, aroma then. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very sweet beer, this one. Um, do you want to lead on that? What yeah, you there's uh, obviously lots of chocolate, dark chocolate, some roastiness as well. Right? It's, it's not only only like sweet chocolate, but there's also some roasty backbone to it. Mm. The thing that comes to mind for me is that, you know, the cocoa nibs always give you that dryness. Yeah. So to me it's quite sweet, but yeah, I see the roastiness in there, but it's the it's more dry yeah. rather than roasty, I think. Um, yeah, there's a wee bit of that roasty, toasty thing underneath, but then it's I think it sweetens out once you get over that a lot. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a wee bit of, like, nuttiness and vanilla yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Definitely a bit of milk chocolate. There's a bit of that car of Carl Fazer in here for sure. Yeah. Got a little bit of that kind of finished milk yeah. chocolate. Um, it's quite nice. Uh, yes, yeah, so you've got a little bit of that Carl Fazer kind of milk chocolate on that 30 40 percent cocoa thing. But yeah, there is a wee bit of something deeper in there. You know, a 60 60 70 percent cocoa. So a bit of dark chocolate, but also that drier cocoa nib. Um, there's maybe a little bit of, I think there's a wee bit of brown sugar in there, yeah. but not too much. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got a wee bit of like sweet caramel, toasty caramel. Um, yeah, almost like, like a muscovado sugar. Yeah, that's a good shout actually, yeah, muscovado. It's, yeah, it's got this little bit of, you know, it's, it's like sweet caramel, slightly toasty, but it's not yeah. leathery like it's been a long boil. I don't no, think it's, this it's, is... it's slightly burnt caramel. Like. It is slightly burnt. Yeah, it doesn't strike me as being an overly long boil stout, this one, especially when it's only 9%. You're yeah. not going to double mash this. You're not going to uh, do an excessively long boil. Um, yeah, anything else you want to, you would think about the, the malt base? No, that's about it. It's, yeah. It's, it's almost what I expected with the, with the whole chocolate overload that it has. Yeah, I mean for me, like hoppy wise as well, it's a little touch earthy, there's a bit of grassiness, I don't think there's anything else to say about the green side of things. No. Uh, fruity wise, what do you reckon? It's ever so slightly, uh, like raisiny, raisiny notes, but not much like like proper fruitiness or anything like that. Yeah, for me, like I would agree with the raisins. A little bit of raisin. It's not quite juicy enough no. to be plum. It's got a little bit of that chocolate brownie type vibe to it as well, doesn't yeah. it? Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of that chocolate brownie kind of thing going on. There's a wee bit of. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, you get a little bit of like a black currenty, black berry sort of thing. Um, yeah, black currenty, black berry, raisin, then a sort of cool chocolate brownie. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything more to say. Oh, that's about it, I think. That's it, yeah. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of, you know, brandyish booziness to it as well. You know, you get a little bit of that, I think, but it's pastry stout. You can smell that granola thing the more you smell this beer. Yeah, so absolutely, a big pastry stout, this one, for sure. Um, yeah, ready to taste? Yeah. All right, yeah. so this is Chocolate Galore, 9% ABV, our fourth and final tasting here at Coolhead in Viki. Viki. Viki, got it, in Helsinki here in Finland. Keep this. Yeah, keep this. Cool. Oh yeah, pastry stout all the way, isn't it? Yeah. It really has this, when you first taste this, it has that granola licorice candy sort of thing that you expect for pastry. This, this is pastry stout all the way. The last stout I remember from these guys was a bit more, it wasn't quite as old school as this. Maybe because it was a little bit more boozy, a little bit yeah. more, it's because it was a bit heavier. This is, yeah. More, yeah, more pastry stout than the other ones. But not as chocolatey as I was expecting. There's a lot of other flavors as well mm. in there. It really is quite cakey, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think for sure this is this is uh, pastry stout all the way. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for me, pastry pastry stout all the way. Like the backbone of this beer, you've got that granola type thing, you've got a bit of chocolate brownie, you've got the roasty toasted black malt. Yeah, that's the backbone of this beer. So yeah, roasty toasted black malt, granola, then you've got that kind of almost thick, really dense layer of like chocolate brownie. Um, Definitely more like more, more dark chocolate than, than milk chocolate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I would agree with you there. Yeah, so yeah, this one's def yeah definitely more of a kind of 60-70% cocoa type chocolate. Yeah, some, um, some bitter, bitter dark chocolate. I think if you look at that middle third of your palate, on the front part of that there's a bit of vanilla and a bit of nuttiness. And then at that front it has a little bit of milk chocolate, but then further back it's absolutely like a 70-80% you know, yeah. cocoa kind of thing. Um, yeah, and you get more on that back third of the palette. It really has that sort of muffin, brownie yeah. type thing to it. You really get more of that bitterness and that thickness for sure. Um, yeah. Anything, any other sort of flavours you're getting out of this one? No, it's just <coughs> different chocolates, some vanilla, some nuttiness. Mm. That's about it. It's kind of what you'd expect, to be honest. But it's again, it's quite well done. Yeah. Um, I don't think this is quite as good as the other stout I've had from uh, from Showhead in yeah. the past. And what would you say about the stouts compared to the stouts you've had? Uh, yeah, this is more on the light, lighter side in, in terms of flavor and uh, like thickness. Mm. This is quite nice, but but not as good as the other Showhead. Uh, starts up right? Yeah, I think the cool head ones, and this isn't just because we're Scottish and Finnish, I think the other cool head ones that are a bit heavier, are a yeah. bit, they just stand out a bit more, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah what do you think about the hoppy side of things? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting too much hoppy, hoppy flavors, maybe some earthiness and we've been crashing, yeah, we've been crashing this, but not that much. Yeah, I think I, I agree. Yeah. There's a bit of earthiness in the back, which you almost get a slight coffee flavour out of this the yeah. more that you drink of it. It almost has a little bit of that. So there's a bit of earthiness there, a little bit of coffee, a bit of wet grassiness. Um, yeah. What about the fruity side of things, like front third of the palate? The raisin is, is there. Not as prominent as in the aroma, but it's sticking it there. I'm not getting much, much any, anything else. Yeah, I mean, for me, like the, the base of that front third of the palette is that big chocolate brownie thing again. 
but it's got that cakey kind of thing. But then, yeah, raisin, plum. No, it's got a, for me. It's got a bit more of a kind of dainty, pruny sort of. Yeah, thing maybe some, yeah, dried figs or yeah, well, so more of a dried fruit yeah. thing. And then the front part of the palette is more black currant. I think they're like it's rather than sharp and blackberry. It's more like a, a kind of black currant for me. So yeah, raisins, dates, and prunes, and then a little bit of a. Yeah. <coughs> Black currant sort of thing for sure. Um, it's an interesting beer, this. It is quite interesting, but as I say, not quite as hit, you know, not quite as big and bold as some of the other stouts we've had from Coolhead in the past. Um, yeah, what do you think about mouthfeel? It's, it's meat bodied, like quite oily. Usually I'd like this kind of style to be a bit thicker, mm. but it's it's decent, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. For me, I'm not a huge fan of pastry stouts. I actually enjoy, I think for me, I would love this. I would enjoy this a bit more if it was a milk stout, like an imperial milk stout. Kind of thing with just, you know, the chocolate and the cocoa nymphs added to it. I would enjoy that a little bit more. The thing that puts me off these beers is the kind of brownie and granola type flavours. And it's, you know, it's, it's it doesn't shut... Fuck off, Seagull. I hate these things. I just wish rifle bang. There you go. That's it. Anyway, you can phone the, the SSPB on me. There we go. But, um, yeah. The, yeah, for me, pastry stouts are kind of... It's, it's, it's not my favourite style. I prefer a milk stout or an old school RIS. I don't like this kind of middle ground that they have. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, for me... It's, it's, it's good, but not as good as you can get from Coolhead. IBU wise, I think this is maybe about 50 ish. It's got a bit of malty yeah, bitterness. Yeah, malty, yeah. And uh, yeah, about 50 IBUs, smooth malt base, a um, bit of sweetness to it as well. And then you've, I think fruity wise, it's a bit oily and things. Um, yeah, tip, you know, typical pastry stout. As I said, I don't enjoy pastry stouts madly much. I prefer an old school RIS or a. A kind of milk stout, imperial milk stout, something like that. Um, but you do know I hate seagulls. Um, they don't even taste nice, they're just pointless animals. But uh, yeah, that's that. So that was the Chocolate Galore 9% ABV uh, Imperial Pastry Stout from Coolhead. That is our fourth and final tasting. Once I've shot the seagull, I'll give you my final thoughts here at Coolhead. So catch you guys in a second. Thank you to Miku for joining us for Thank you. a tasting again. See you guys very soon. Cheers. Alright guys, well that is our time up then here at Coolhead in Viki in the northeastern part of Helsinki. So yeah, we had a nice couple of hours here. We had some really nice beers. We got to try a Mexican Lager, a New England IPA, uh, one of the fruit sours and also one of the kind of pastry stouts. All the styles that Coolhead are well known for. They were all very nice beers. I think probably out of the four, probably the New England IPA or the fruit sour was my favourite one I thought those were both really nice but yeah the pizzas were very good a little bit spicy and I have to say the music did get a little bit better as the night went on I was a little bit kind of regretting coming uh, because of the, the volume of the music and uh, the kind of style of music and things like that they were playing but yeah it did chill out a little bit later on and I really enjoyed it but uh, yeah this was a really nice visit it was cool of Riku to kind of show us where this place is it's a little bit out of the way but definitely worth a visit if you find yourself here in Helsinki uh, I think in total for the beers I paid somewhere in the region of about 15 16 euros something like that so yeah that's about yeah 16 dollars uh somewhere in the region of you know 15 pounds something like that um so yeah for drinking 0 0.15 150 milliliters i thought that was worth it but i did want to come up here and just do tasters to be honest with you rather than doing the whole kind of big pint things but yeah really enjoyable evening here in Vicky trying some of the cool head beers really unique venue somewhere that I would highly recommend that you guys check out if you get the chance so I hope that you guys enjoyed another out and about video really glad that I got to come up here to cool head and I hope to see you guys in another video very very soon so check out cool head check out their social media check out my social media and I'll see you guys in another video very very shortly slanjit skull cheers keep us and kitos as they would see here in Finland. Slanger.